Ladies and gentlemen, we're certainly glad to be here tonight. Welcome to the Moon Men Podcast. Don't be afraid. A little escapade of mine involving a couple of planets that shall be nameless. Fasten your seatbelts. It's going to be a bumpy night. Ignition sequence start. Six, five, four, three, two, one, zero. You know, I'm thinking about buying my own camera. Your own personal camera? Yeah. Or like your movies? Mm hmm. Because. Could we I, use I, it for I, the show? Because maybe. Because I feel too dorky walking around with that. Why? I feel like a middle aged dad at Venice or something. You're too insecure. That's what it is. You no, gotta... like. And, and like, I have to look. Instead of looking down and straight, I have to look to the left to see if, if I'm filming. You. you yeah, it's but it's the inconvenience there, there, of it. There's a lot of professional like, cameras like that. No, like like that one. It this setup is fine for us because it's standard. It's not moving. It's right there. <laughs> but oh fuck, are we supposed to talk about? Am I supposed to talk about this? Yeah, no, you can mention it. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> you, you know now you know why I can't. Well, I, yeah, no, no, <laughs> I'm thinking about it. I don't know if it's gonna ruin it or build suspense. You okay? Right now we're fucking with cameras, people. That's all you gotta know. Stuff is happening. Yeah. You, you guys have probably pieced it together yourselves if you have even half of a brain cell. Right now we're looking at ourselves live. This is weird. I kind of actually, I kind of like this. I like this. I kind of do too. I'm coming around to it. Yeah, yeah. I also sound weird because I'm getting over a sinus infection that nearly took my fucking life. But I'll get into that in a second. Cameras. Now, Oh, the, the camera, say, yeah. the camera I one has a screen right in the middle, <laughs> and then, and then some other people get a secondary camera. So instead of looking straight down, to it's a screen that you could pull up and it's right. At, okay, you're thinking about like the twenty thousand dollar camera rigs that they have to rent out. They yes. don't even own those. Yes. Th that, I guess having high expectations is somewhat of a good thing but in this instance like you're just gonna have to work with what you got the camera's a little bit off to the side boo fucking who yeah but you're, you're taking what, if you get if you get are you thinking about getting like those let me show you what let me show you the i ones. have an idea of the camera you're gonna get it's the one with the big fucking center camera and then it's got the screen on the back and then it's got like a little handle right here right and then you can attach like a mic to it and sort of like the ones that the professional YouTubers use. Yeah, but but this one is pretty cheap. Oh, how how much? Like 115. Would we be able to use it on the show? Oh, I didn't. I forgot to save it. Fuck. Hold on. I think we should have three cameras in the future setup. Camera one. Oh my bad. It was 100, 150. Even still, that's that's pretty that's, decent for a camera. See? All my photographers out there, you guys know. Oh, yeah. See, this is exactly what I was envisioning. 4K. Wow. Ultra HD. And it comes with one lens, which is nice. 48 megapixels. Okay. Others. Hours. Wait. Ever, since... Oh, fuck. What? Cut this part out. Every time I show you something, aren't we supposed to put it on, on the screen? Not necessarily. Because I looked at... I looked at some other podcasts. But I looked at some other podcasts for references, right? And like on the goat Joe Rogan's, they just pull it up and then they have it on the little corner. Uh, and then on uh, the H three podcast, they had a similar setup. I don't even think they showed the videos; they just showed the reactions to it. But I guess we'll find our own. I, okay, what I'm thinking we can do is if we have something referenced. I'll put it on the bottom of the screen in the middle. Oh, okay. But God, we're going to have to, I'm going to have to hire an artist to do a bunch of like background effects for us and special custom like text. And you could just like pay, that. pay an AI bot to do that. I'm not doing that. I'm not, I'm not contributing to the AI revolution. That's going to end the world. Why? Last because I'm not giving it any more ammo and if we're going to die. Last episode, you're like, you know what? Take us out. I don't even care. Yeah, but that doesn't mean I'm going to contribute to it. And if if we're going to die anyways, I'd rather die helping out another human. You know? The robot's going to kill us at the end of the day, so I'm not going to ally with it. 
You know what I mean? Yes, but humans are lazy, lazy pieces of shit. Yes, but there are some talented artists out there that are, could hire to do like... I don't even know what the fuck they're called. They're not bumpers. They're like cutaways. You know, like custom cutaways and shit like if that. You, if, if, if in the future, if whenever we do video podcasts, if you just start hearing, if I hear, whew, 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 I am no longer doing the podcast. What are you talking about? You know how how in the modern YouTube videos, to, oh that 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 the, the, the one they one they the one they they wonder they cut away like. Whew. Yeah, no, we're yeah, not doing that. Okay, that. thank God. I mean, like, um, the people who do it best are Twitch streamers, right? You notice how they'll have like borders that are like moving and they're custom to their thing oh okay 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 now i know what you mean and then they'll have like the countdown timer screen or the uh i went to the restroom screen shit like that i want to get stuff like that for the show that matches our overall theme so like if i pull up a video it'll have a border that matches oh okay theme, okay okay right? yeah I, I, now now i see what you mean but and then we'll have we, we have an intro now for the video podcast right but i'm hoping later on down the line we're able to get like a dynamic video where it feels like you know it's animated and things are happening you know not just like a video i was able to throw together mm. granted I'm, I'm proud of the the intro i put a lot of work yeah, into that you, you 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 did good i still gotta edit some stuff about it but the whole thing to me i wanted it to be more animated and with the systems i'm using right now i'm not able to do it <laughs> unless you want to get an adobe subscription with me how much is it? Uh, I think it's like twenty bucks for a team, a, a team. month. It's twenty bucks a month. Fuck. But we get we get Adobe Premiere, we get Photoshop, we get uh, Audition, everything we would need to make the show and other stuff creatively. But that's something we could talk about off podcast. Th- th- this entire conversation is was was supposed to be off podcast. Yeah, but I think it's cool to you know give the the fans a little insight here and there into the background stuff. You know, yeah. because we say if you want to start a podcast, just join. Yeah, that's podcast. true. That's true. But there's a lot of things that go into having a podcast, you know? Yeah. Like the financial th- aspect of it, the gear, the equipment, you know? So giving them any little peaks where we can without boring them, I think will be beneficial for people interested in that kind of shit. Oh, I was I was thinking about this earlier. What? Girls who work, girls with big boobs work at Hooters. Oh. But what but what do you call a girl with one leg? Where does she work at? I want to say in and out. I hop. Ah. <laughs> that's terrible. It's not even good. God. Okay, I want you guys to know. Oh wait. Welcome back to the Moon Man podcast. I'm your host Devin. This is your co-host Eddie. They they're not going to see this, by the way. <laughs> this, I know. Yeah, I know. I know. I might use it as promo or teasing, but for all intents and purposes, the only people that are dude, gonna this see is this, growing. Uh, this is really growing on me. The only people that are gonna see this video is gonna it's be us. me and you. Yeah, yeah. Like I'm gonna. I don't think there's any way I'll be able to share the file with you. Once Email it to it. me. It's too big. It'll be like 40 minutes long. Fuck, that's true. Does it, it send me a five minute clip? What I could do, I think you have access to the YouTube, right? I can no m- uh, upload it as a private video, and then you'll be able to see it. We'll figure it out when we that get there. That way I can also test what, the, the, the export settings. What, what, Anyways. What, we'll figure it out when, when we get there. I'm, I'm your host, Devin. That's your co-host, Eddie. Uh, sorry, guys. We got a lot going on, okay? As... Oh, you guys aren't aware of this, actually. Or you, some of you might be aware if you follow the Instagram. But... Moving forward, after this, the release of this episode, we are going to be taking a two-week hiatus break. And I feel like I should announce that on the actual episode because I know a lot of you don't actually follow read, our read, socials. Read the script. Read the script. The script? Where? Oh, the one I wrote? Yeah. Okay, hold on. I'm pulling it up. But damn, you have some big-ass balls. What? <laughs> what? You have no case on. Oh, yeah, yeah. You scared the fuck out of me. <laughs> I thought you I thought you were... I, I was like, my water bottle's here. What the fuck are you looking at? Yeah, I my dude, if you saw my case, you would know how poor I am, okay? You would know the financial crisis I am in if you saw my fucking phone case. It's falling at the seams. Does that fit? I don't know. Cuz I have a similar one. 
This is a 13. No. The buttons are off. Oh, okay. Never mind, then. Almost. Thank um, you for your consideration. Yeah. Though. Fuck, man. <laughs> I, I'm currently trying to get Eddie's phone case off of my Go phone. Go from the corner. Go from the corner. Is that it's, from the bottom? The bottom. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Thank you. Thank you. Cool. What the fuck was I looking for again? The script? Yeah. I just see memories of when I looked like a Giga Chad. Jesus. Uh, <laughs> All right. God, do you really want me to read this verbatim? Yes. Hello, goons. This is an announcement to let you all know that we will be taking a short two-week break following the release of episode 54, this episode. This is in order to prepare for the one-year special we have planned, which will premiere on September 18th, 2023. It will be radio silent on our, on our end. Why is that so hard? On our be, end. See? <laughs> on our end. On our end. Say it. You, you say it with an accent. On our end. It will be radio silent on our end on until our end. the date arrives. Look to the stars and be patient, goons. Things are happening. Thank you all again for the support over the last year. And thank you for continuing to tune in every week. Blah, 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 blah. That's crazy to me. We're about to hit the one year special. I know we just hit episode I know. 50 a couple weeks back. Mm -hmm. But the one year is more exciting to me. I know. It's like a baby. We kept alive. Like you and I had sex, and then we made a baby. Okay, don't stop. <laughs> I know we've been keeping the 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 shipping narrative alive for as long as we can, but it's starting to get outrageous. What you do you know? mean? Because in the beginning, there was the whole running gag where you and me would like kiss off. off oh camera. no, that was you. That was all yeah, you. Yeah, you kept it going with like massages and me and you fucking after the show, okay. and then having sex and sleeping together. But now it's just it's getting too much. Okay, my sinuses are fucked right now. I can't be taking these gay jokes up the ass. Oh, wait. That was not intentional. The point being, I don't know if we can carry this over into year two of the show. I think this has to die with year one. He's looking at me like I broke his heart. Um, There's some really good lighting for you. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> um. God, I feel like I sound all nasally. What were we talking about? The oh, year, oh, the one the year. One yeah, year. The, yeah, yeah, the one year. Uh, I'm very happy to, for for the one year. I and know. thank you, everyone listening to this. Thank you for supporting us. Thank you for giving us a chance. It really means a lot. Um, And, you know, I, I, I kind of hinted it on the fucking, on the announcement, but you, you guys should go back and binge all the episodes, you know, because I know a lot of you motherfuckers aren't caught up. I could see the statistics, all right? I know a lot of you stopped around a certain area i think it was like episode 42 ish I, I i feel like a lot of people are gonna listen to the one year oh yeah they're gonna be like what the fuck eddie and devin made it to one year yeah there it's gonna there's gonna be multiple reasons why so we gotta we gotta make sure we're we're dressed to impress we look good we feel good and we got fucking content ready do we have to wear uniforms no what what uniforms like, do we have to wear the same stuff on camera? No. I mean, you wanted to wear what we wore the first time. So No, but I mean, like, that. every time that that every time we have a camera on no, us. No, just dress however. If, you, if you're wearing the exact same outfit from the last episode, who gives a shit? doesn't really fucking uh, matter, fun, fun fact, I own 14 pairs of the same shirt, so you're always going to see me 14 wearing... 14 pairs? Yes. Yeah, I'll show you to you right now. Well, I can kind of see. It's just the big yeah, black mass yeah. in the middle. Yeah. <laughs> Green, black, red, gray, black. It's White. Just, and when I say black, it's like a fucking wall of black <laughs> over there. It's just like green shirt, green shirt, black. It's like a black vortex in my in my closet. <laughs> but um, yeah, we. I, I'm assuming we're just gonna wear whatever the fuck we want. Uh, you know, based off of the weather, one, based off the season. One episode, we should not wear shorts or pants. Because right now, you can only see the upper half of us. Yeah, but that's with our current setup. I feel like if we do do that. Right, we wear spandex underneath just to keep everything tucked in. But then we wear boxers one episode only. You know, just a shirt and boxers. Get real comfortable. I don't want my penis to pop out. That's what I'm saying. You wear spandex underneath so that your penis won't pop out. Oh, and then boxes over it. Yeah, yeah. Oh, okay, 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 okay. Unless you're really comfortable, you don't think it's gonna pop out, then you know you can you can free ball it. I'm not gonna say. Wait, anything. I just I just remember something. <laughs> oh, real, I realized one thing. I remember a second thing. What? The first realization, Alfred never got back to me. Yeah. I just assumed that 
Okay. I'm thinking we'll have Alfred on. <coughs> we'll have Alfred on after the one year, so like yeah. episode fifty six. But that make that doesn't make sense. And then, as whenever he's talking, we'll just put a picture of like the a- an AI on the screen, or we'll put a pe- picture of him. You know, so we can have the camera like this, and then we'll have like a picture of Alfred right here. You know, so look at the frame. Over here, where the book, the the record shelf is, mm-hmm. we'll put like a picture of him, and then it'll be like a Discord thing. Oh, we can't, talks. we can't, we can't have this conversation on here. Yeah, we're going too much into the yeah, background. Yeah, okay, the, we the, had topics for today. The, the second thing I remembered was that story you've been wanting to tell me since yesterday. Oh, I'll get to that. Hurry up, Jesus! <laughs> I feel like I I gotta get some context though because I'm I'm sorry. About the the way I sound and the fucking coughs and shit. Like I said, Devin, it's been fifty four episodes. You cannot apologize now. No, what? <laughs> oh, okay. No, because no, your I'm voice is about... annoying. Is what I'm trying to say. No, yeah, I got it. I got it late. Yeah. Uh, I'm I'm getting over the fucking sinus infection. It it almost took me out. I messaged you guys on Discord. I was asleep, and I have my Discord notifications muted. I know, but like, I don't know why I did it. Like, I was looking at it the next day. And I'm all, why did I message these guys? Like, what What was I expecting them to do? Yeah. Like, wake up in the middle of the night to come get me a fucking towel or something? Like, I don't know. But at one point, I think it's a sinus infection. I didn't go to the doctor. I almost never go to the doctor because they're just... I, I don't know why. Maybe it's the Mexican in me. Who gives a shit? But at one point, I had a fever. And it was so bad that I was, like, bedridden, right? I couldn't move. My body was aching. It was hurting. Everything like I cu- I couldn't get out of the bed. I was shaking, and I was sitting there with a the fucking um. I was sitting there with two blankets on me, and a hoodie on because I was freezing cold. But my body was heating up, and I was burning up actually. And I honestly thought for a good five minutes that this was the end. I honestly thought I was at the end of my journey and my life was flashing before my eyes right and i was thinking back on my life and everything were you proud happened. of your life i was i was i think i said it in the discord i was like you know i was proud of the things that i was able to accomplish i was proud of the memories that i had i was like could i have done more yeah sure of course there was a lot i still wanted to do but if i died right now i think i'd be able to make it and then i started giving myself a pep talk in my head i'm like what do you th- what are you thinking about this is pussy shit. You got to wake up. And then I started thinking of like fictional characters. Let's just say Batman. I'm like, you think Batman would give up this easily? You think that if this was Batman sick in bed, he would just be laying here? He'd be out in the streets. He'd be protecting Gotham. And so I was like, mm, and I forced myself to get up and get a, a get, get a towel and put it on my head. Because I was at like 104, 105 degrees from my estimations. I couldn't find a thermometer anywhere. I checked the whole house or where I was able to check. But I've been sick enough times that my my predictions are usually correct. I'll be like, oh, I, I think I'm at about 100. Check the temperature, I'm 101, you know? Pretty fucking close, I would say. Get to it. What? The the story. Oh, the the, the burrito story. Yeah. Okay. You know, you're just kind of killing my whole vibe here. I thought not Why? talking all day would, like, give us... I talked to you too much when we were setting up, and now it killed the fucking vibe. Because you this is all you want. You just want the fucking gory details, and you don't want to foreplay anymore. You know, that, 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 that's what gets me about you. You just want to go straight into it. You know, I like the foreplay. I like to, you know, do you get it? Do you understand what I'm trying to say? Yeah, do it. Okay. So as I was feeling better off of, after my sinus infection, get right, to it. Kyle thought it was a good idea for us to, you know, start hitting the town a little bit. Right. And we decided to go to Filiberto's to get some, uh, burritos. Why did I say it like that? We were burritos. Make... Burritos. I didn't Roll your that. R's. I can't. I can't. Burritos. I can't do it. I can't yes, do it. Yes, you can. Burritos. Anais tried to teach me. I can't do it. Carla tried to teach me. I can't do it. Tried to teach me. I can't do it. Geraldine tried to teach me. I can't do it. I teach me. I can't do it. You just, you, you just realized. You, you said two names you weren't supposed oh. to. Try to teach me and I can't do it. I'm going to have to cut out all these names. Oh. Hector tried to teach me and I can't do it. The Hector was black. Me too. <laughs> but apparently he can turn the bean on when he wants to. Oh. Uh, fucking lost my point. Oh, rolling the R's. <laughs> I just realized it's all women who have tried to teach me Spanish. Is it because they're natural teachers? Roll your R's. 
I'm not. No, I can't. <laughs> there. No. <you> happy? <laughs> it sounds like I'm eating pussy. <laughs> <laughs> I, can't, I can't do it. Put <laughs> put put the tongue. Put put your tongue on on top of your root on t- the. Uh-huh. There you go. Uh-huh. Keep going. Uh huh. Uh-huh. No, <laughs> no, like. <laughs> are you no. proud are you happy do you feel better now i can't roll my fucking r's i've been trying my whole life Devin, get to it you you did this delay okay don't come at me <laughs> you caused this this junction so we went to go to filiberto's right and uh we were gonna get some burritos did you get the number one or two huh did you get the number one or two i got the arizona what is it the number three I think it's... It didn't have a number. Oh. I didn't get a combo. I got a burrito. Just a burrito? <laughs> mm-hmm. You know drink? Let me get to it. Oh, okay. So, as you guys all know, currently, I'm unemployed. It's looking like that's about to change, but we're not going to get into that. There are reasons for my unemployment other than just me wanting to be lazy, you know, creative pursuits, all that jazz. That being said, money is a struggle a lot of the time, right? And I got used to the the graciousness of my friends to support me wait hold on podcasts. before you continue on are you saying it the exact same way that you told your brother i mean i'm trying to get i'm trying to say it better but it's hard with the constant interruptions well no say like say like you told your brother I, i'm getting there okay i'm okay, getting there okay. i have to set the context okay. a little bit okay because you understand some of this shit the people don't like me being broke all the fucking time okay mm-hmm. i'm broke all the fucking time people that's what i'll say i'm broke all the fucking time i'm not gonna dance around it Recently, I started betting because of my friend Hector, right? Speaking about Betty, thank you for, for reminding me. Uh, also, because of my friend Hector, I lost all my gambling money. You that, did? No, okay, well, let me let me be clear. I put $10 in. I made $300 that week. But I left $20 in my account to bet with, right? And I had withdrew some money. I had gone to eat with that money um, with Kyle another day. It's, it's For me, it's looking good. It's looking good. Fuck I, you. I need two more games. Fuck you. I'm currently on hiatus because of this shit. So I needless to say, I had money in my account and I lost all of it. But I thought I still had pocket change. Right. I was like, oh, I got six dollars in my account. Surely this is going to be perfect. Right. Kyle calls me. He's like, you want to get Philly Berthos? I was like, yeah, because I'm like, I got six dollars in my account. And then Kyle's like, all right, pick me up because his trucks just went completely. The truck's out of service. Yeah. Right yeah. Uh, and I. I'll buy his Filibertos. So I didn't think I had to pay. But when I got to Kyle's house, he was like, yeah, a bill went through. And it turns out I only got $12 in my account. I was like, that's fine. I got six. (laughs) We'll make it work. And he's like, I bet. I also got eight in cash. I was like, oh, shit, we're eating, right? We're going to be eating. So we drive to the nearest Filibertos, right? We're having this heartfelt conversation about moving up in the world and uh, just things changing and relationships and that kind of shit, right? Right. We get to Filibertos and it's completely empty, right? The inside is empty, but there's cars in the drive through. So I was like, are we getting down or you want to go to the drive through? He's all, let's get down, make it easier to pay. I was like, you're right. So we get down, empty. We walk over to the counter, we're waiting for a couple minutes and we're staring up at the menu. And I told Kyle as we're walking in, I was like, no drinks because. We don't have enough money. And he's like, nah, fuck you. I'm going to get a Dr. Pepper. I was like, no, we don't have enough money. We're going to have to raw dog this shit. He's like, I'm getting a Dr. Pepper whether you stop me or not. And I was like, that don't make sense. But okay. So we went into the fucking Filibertos. We order our food, right? And uh, I placed my order. And then all I got was a regular burrito. Nothing fancy. Just give me the burrito. We're good. Burrito's like $11. What? Yeah. that It's Filibertos. I like Viva better, but he wanted to go there. So I'm like, go ahead, Kyle, take it away. All right. Kyle's all. Uh, yeah. Can I start it off? Uh, I want to do a build your own burrito and or some shit like that. Right. So he starts getting he's all. let me get a bean burrito with cheese, but not that cheese, this cheese. <laughs> and then can I switch out the tortilla for this kind of tortilla? And then can I also and I'm like, oh, no. And I look down at the screen and I see the eight. Or the 11 or whatever it was, start jumping up. And she's adding on all these little fees that come with changing your fucking burrito. 
by the time he's done, we're sitting at like $19. I'm like, okay, <laughs> that's getting close, but I think we could still manage, right? When tax comes in and everything, I think we'll be good. And he's all, also, can we get two drinks? And I looked at him, but I was like, all right, you know, if we can make it work, we'll see. And I looked at him, and I looked back down at the screen. I'm like, shit, it's uh, the two drinks. It brought it up to like 22. I'm like, all right, shit. And then I forgot what else he added under his burrito. But then I looked down at the total and it was 28. And I was like, wait a minute. <laughs> Something ain't right here. And I started doing the math in my head. I was like, I don't think we have enough to cover this. <laughs> I was like, what the, what the change and then the tax? And I was like, we're going to have to remove something, right? And then Kyle whispered to me. He's like, trust me. He's all. I'm going to try this one card. And if it don't work, then we'll use our, our money. He's like, hopefully it goes through on this one card because then it'll just be one payment. We'll be good. I'm like, all right, fuck it. And he's all, all right, I'm going to pay. Right. And, uh, he taps down his card and we're waiting in anticipation for about 30 seconds. And then it goes decline. He's all, can I try it again? And then she looks up and she's like, yeah, sure. And he's all, all right. Puts the card back down, decline. He's like, can I try another oh card? My, oh. And I was like, oh God, oh no, this is turning bad. <laughs> this is this is the worst case scenario. And then he looks down again and then he's all, uh, okay. And then he swipes, decline. And then I was like, okay, uh, can we split the payment between two different cards and then add in cash? And I think I might have some coins in my car. And then she was like, she was like, uh, I don't know and she's like okay give me the cash first so then Kyle gives her the eight dollars cash right and then she goes okay now do the card and then he had twelve dollars in his card right but I looked at the screen and the eight didn't go through I don't know why the system worked like that but it wasn't showing the the eight withdrew or whatever so I'm staring at the screen and it's a twenty five dollar charge and I'm like this shit ain't gonna go through <laughs> there ain't no way this shit goes through so then he swipes decline and he swipes again decline and then she, she's looking at him and he's starting to like nervous giggle. He's, start, he's starting to, to sweat. He's starting to sweat a little bit and I'm starting to nervous giggle, right? <laughs> and then he's, I was like, can you set it for $12? I was like, you got 12, right? He's like, yeah, I got 12. I was like, can you set it for $12? And she's like, yeah, sure. So she sets it for 12. He swipes and it's still not going through. And then I was like, can you take off one of the cups? We don't need two drinks. <laughs> and then she's like, yeah, sure. And she goes, hold on, I'm going to reset the system. And she leaves. And then Kyle turns to me, he's all, Zell me your six dollars and then we'll make this as one big payment, right? And then just be done with it. I was like, All right, cool. What's your Zell? And I pull up my bank account and he's all, Let me check. And then I'm like, Oh, oh God. <laughs> and I look at him and I'm like, Kyle, <laughs> I only have a dollar. <laughs> oh. And then he turns to me and his eyes are fucking huge. And he looks and he's all, What? <laughs> and I was like, uh, and right as the girl came back and came out, I was like, I only have a dollar in my account. <laughs> a charge went through. And then he goes, What? And then the girl's all, What? And I was like, I only got a dollar. <laughs> and I started laughing, right? Because I can't hold it in no more. And then he starts laughing. And then she starts laughing. And I was like, I don't think we're going to be able to cover it. And he's like, No, we got it. It'll go through. And so then uh, she sets up the payment again and then he swipes his card. And again, it says decline. And then he she sets it up again and then he swipes and then a receipt comes out. And we're like, huh? And then she looks at the receipt and then she takes another receipt and she holds them together and she looks at them and she has this like really weird look on her face, right? Like something doesn't look right. right. And then she's looking at us and really slowly she goes, can I keep this receipt? And then he goes, yeah and then she's like okay and she grabs a straw and she puts it in his cup and she pushes his cup towards him right and then she just walks away that was it and i looked at kyle and i was like did it go through and he's like i don't know <laughs> and then i was like what do we do he's all let's go sit down and i was like did it go through <laughs> i was like do we have to stay here are we waiting for the manager he's like i, I don't know let's go sit down <laughs> And so then we go and we sit down at a nearby table and he checks his bank account and he goes, it says it got declined. I was like, what do you mean? And I was like, he's all, uh, I'm looking at my bank and it says that the Philly Berthos charge is going to get declined because you don't have enough money in your account. And I was like, so we're just scamming these people. 
And then he goes, I, I don't know. I think their system thinks it went through. And I was like, so what are we going to do? She's going to come back right now and realize that we don't have no fucking money to pay for these fucking burritos. And then he's like, no, this is what we're going to do. When she comes back with the burritos, we're going to grab them. And we're going to leave. And I was like, we can't do that. And he's like, we're going to have to. I was like, Kyle. He's like, Devin, what else are we supposed to do? And I was like, let's work the fucking kitchen. I well, I didn't I I wasn't I didn't want to suggest that because this was supposed to be a quick trip. We were supposed to go get burritos and then come back, right? And so I'm like, we told her we were gonna eat here, and then he goes, I know. I was like, I I don't know I don't know. He's all Devin. I'm gonna go fill up my cup of water or, or soda, and then when she brings the burritos, grab them and we're gonna leave. And then I just sat there. And I'm contemplating my life and I'm like, your hands are sweaty. I was like, what the fuck is going on here? I was so confused because she gave us a look. Right. And in my head, I was like, did she just give us free burritos or does she know or does she not know that it it didn't go through? Right. Is she under the assumption it went through and they're going to realize later or does she give us these burritos? Kyle comes back. And he has a fucking shit ton of sauces and lemon and all kinds of fucking like pico de gallo and shit. And I'm like, this motherfucker, we don't even have the money to pay for these burritos. And he's taking everything from this fucking place, man. And then she comes back and she looks at me and she puts the tray down and she goes, here you go. And I go, thank you. (laughs) And I grab the burritos and she walks off and disappears almost like she knew. Right. And we're looking around and there ain't nobody in sight. And I'm like, Kyle, he's all grab the burritos. And he just starts walking out. And I grab him and I'm all, Kyle. And then he just starts fucking beelining to the fucking door, right? He's just ignoring me walking straight and he's walking fast. And I'm like, fuck. <laughs> so I grab the I grab the napkins and I start following after him. And I'm like, Kyle. And then we get outside and then he like runs to the car. He's like, unlock the car, unlock the car. <laughs> and we get in the fucking car and then he goes, drive, drive, get the fuck out of here. And I'm like, bro, did we just steal burritos? <laughs> He's like, get the fuck out of here. We're never going to be back here again. I was like, no. And so we're leaving, right? And we park, right? We get stopped at a red light right in front of the fucking store. So if she's at the counter, she can see us. Right, it's in the middle of the day. The sh- sun is shining on us. She knows what car we're in because we were the only car in the fucking parking lot. And she, all she has to do is look out the fucking window, and she could see us. And it was so intense, right? We were just staring forward. We were just, we weren't looking at our surroundings. We're like, wow, that's a really interesting stoplight over there, right? And Kyle starts putting his fucking seat back and reclining. And I'm like, what are you doing? He's like, I'm reclining. I don't want her to see me. I was like, she's gonna see me now. <laughs> And so then as soon as we get out of fucking eyesight, I open up my burrito and I start eating it. And the worst part about this whole experience, right, wasn't the fact that we committed a shameful act and basically stole burritos from Filiberto's. It wasn't the fact that this patronage of a saint came down and delivered us these burritos herself, you know, after laughing at us for having no money. It's the fact that when I opened this burrito and I took a bite, I realized that this shit was ass philly bertos is like the worst burrito restaurant in tucson and i went through fucking hell to get this free burrito right and then i'm telling kyle i was like you're a piece of shit i was like how are you gonna steal burritos from that place and he goes i stole burritos he's like at least i gave him eight dollars out of my own fucking cash he's like, what did you give him i was like i was gonna give her the world i was gonna (laughs) give her this fucking one dollar she didn't even ask me for it and i was like she didn't give me a chance before we ran out of there stealing all their stock and he goes, no, nah, that's bullshit. I gave him $8. I didn't steal shit. So at the end of the day, we got two burritos and a drink for $8. And I owe Philly Bertos like 20 bucks or something. I don't know. That that was the whole story. Me, me and Kyle stole burritos. <laughs> and yes, some of you might be looking at this or listening to this and uh, thinking I'm a shameful man. And I'll tell you, I went home. And I was ashamed of myself that day. Which was yesterday. <laughs> I was ashamed of myself <laughs> and the things that we did to that poor lady. Because there's a little old Mexican lady, right? And she's laughing at us because we didn't have no money to pay for the food. I, I'm not kidding. I was like, Kyle, I have one dollar in my account. I start laughing, he starts laughing, and she starts. You guys should have texted me. You guys been like, Eddie, we need a favor. 
he, my brother said the same thing. He was like, bro, I'm eating off of these bets. He's like, if you told me you needed ten dollars, I would have gave it to you. I was like, well, thanks, fucking thanks. And now it's over. And I was like, plus you're asleep. You wouldn't have answered. He's like, yeah, I'm a piece of shit. And you, I mean, you were at work. You would have so? been, like, been like, oh, uh, let me go to the bathroom. And then we would have been waiting there like, <laughs> one moment. We're just <laughs> waiting for our friend. Yeah, and then uh, somebody would have came in. And you would have been like, ah, you would have had to help him. And then we're waiting. We're like. At, <laughs> at, at some point, you guys should have been like, we don't have money. Let's leave. I thought that's what we were going to do. I thought that we were going to come to the rational decision like, hey, we don't have enough money to pay for shit right now. So it'd probably be better if we just collect our dignity and leave. But that's not what we did. And we, we stole from You know, th- this is Kyle's fault. It's Kyle's fault for, for wanting to add the, the, the spontaneous <laughs> oh, cheese. Oh, I forgot the worst part of the fucking story. So every time oh. we're making these payments, right? right? We're trying to swipe the card and have it go through. Knowing damn well he doesn't have enough money on his fucking account. This motherfucker kept trying to add a tip. So every time the tip menu came up and he was pressing $5 tip and I started slapping his hand and I was like, Kyle, you don't have enough for a fucking tip. I was like, stop pressing the tip. And he's like, oh yeah, okay. So originally it's like $28 total, right? But then you have the tax and then you have fucking Kyle's $5 tip. And I was like, there ain't no way in hell we could combine all the money we have on our person right now and get all the change we have from my car. And we still wouldn't be able to afford this fucking tip. So... That's my story. You guys are fucking idiots. Oh, we almost died the day before, too. How? Uh, so Kyle has a little manual truck. Oh, you told me about it. But you could say it on here. I'll do it quick. Yeah. He has a little manual truck uh, that's pretty much stock from the 1960s, I believe. Right? It's a little two-seater truck. Tiny, tiny little thing. It barely runs. According to Kyle, it runs 70% of the time, 100% of the time. Or something like that. Uh, we were making a left turn on an inter- intersection that wasn't particularly busy, but Kyle, being Kyle, took a turn that he probably shouldn't have last minute when there was a Dodge Ram bolting towards us, right? This motherfucker was going 70 on a 40, right? 45, 45 mile per hour road, and this motherfucker is going 70, 75 miles, right? He's beelining towards us, and Kyle waited until the last possible second. To take this fucking turn. And when he does. We start stalling out. Mid fucking turn. He shifts into gear. puts, Starts adding some gas. And put a little bit too much. And then we stalled out. Right in front of this fucking Dodge Ram. Ramming right into us. Right. We were three seconds away from death. Again I was looking at this Ram. And thinking you know. I had a good life. I made some friends. It was going to hit your side? Memory. Yeah, it was going to hit me. I was passenger. So it's coming fucking bolting towards us, right? And I'm like, Kyle. And he goes, Devin, we're not moving. I'm like, Kyle. <laughs> and then he starts putting it into gear and giving it gas and turning the engine. And then, boom, we start rolling right before the fucking truck hits us. And then we get onto this like straight road that's going all the way to my house, right? And then he goes, oh, now you fucking work, you fucking piece of shit. And I was like... We almost died back there. And he's all, yep. And that was it. Devin, you and I don't have stories like that. Yeah, me and Kyle almost die a lot more <laughs> times than we should. Yeah. We have only almost died once. <laughs> no, I think there's been a few times, but that I, was back in our, our wild and, days. Yeah, in our high school days when we used to stay past 9 o'clock in our, in our curfew. I mean, how many times did we leave our house in the middle of the night in high school? many 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 we went to we got stranded in in in, on the freeway yeah so i think you know we had adventures but we we calmed down over the years right we chilled out because we're getting older and we're like mellowed out yeah yeah when i hang out with kyle it's like it's like all the testosterone comes back oh that sounds gay all of the the young the youngness in me comes out right and we just start making stupid decisions i'm supposed to be the adult of the group and be like you know what, Kyle, maybe this isn't a good idea. Let's be wise with our money. Let's just leave, make a graceful exit, right? Like, if me and you went to that Filibertos, we wouldn't have left with stolen burritos. No. We, we would have left in shame and laughed about it in the car. Yeah. Right? <laughs> with Kyle, it turns into a whole fucking espionage scenario where the fucking 
he's working together with the lady and we're getting fucking free burritos and shit. And I don't know. Like, it just kind of happens. Like when that, we, that lady probably got fired because of him or you guys. I was thinking about that. But then my brother did a good point. He's all, what if she knew that you guys weren't going to be able to pay for it, right? And uh, she saved the receipt so that she could pull up the tab later and then pay for it with her card. And then that just made me feel even worse because I'm like, fuck, if she did that, she really is a fucking I, saint. I, I, I doubt it. I doubt it. I'm hoping she did so that she saved her job. Because just like that guy who gave me free food at Carl's Jr., the, it just... Ah, it's just shameful. I just feel embarrassed. And I'm like, why? Thank you. I love you. But why? Why for me? I don't deserve it. I'm a piece of shit. <sighs> Want to go back to Filiberto, say? No. No, I do not. Yeah, no. let's go. Nope. Let's go. I'm not going back. Yeah. There. No. Yeah, I'll t- uh, we'll call Kyle. Uh-uh. uh-uh. We'll me, call Kyle. Me and Kyle made a vow to never step foot in that Filiberto's ever again. Wait, whose idea was it to get Filiberto's? Kyle. He has bad taste in food. I know. I told him I'm, un- I'm going to take him to Viva. I personally prefer Viva. I prefer none of those restaurants. What about Rodolfo's? I heard that one's good. Nope. Nope. If Mexican food is getting cooked in a restaurant, it's not good. Mexican food is For only... the most part. Mexican food is only good at a taco stand. Well, I told you. I went to that restaurant in fucking Vegas, and they had an Al Pastor, and it was just mouth-watering. That was all we ate over there. Damn. Do you want to get tacos? <laughs> You're getting hungry, huh? Well, he said Al Pastor, and... Sounds good, right? It's been a while since I had some. Oh, and a burrito. That would be good right now. We almost uh, hit some cars at Denny's, too, because of that fucking truck. What? His name is Sally, by the way. Sally needs to just give up. Oh, Sally died. <laughs> Sally is dead in front of Kyle's house right now. She's not running. Mm. But that same day, we almost died with the fucking Dodge Ram. We were at Denny's. And uh, you know how there's like a little bit of a hill coming out from Denny's? Oh, yeah, yeah. We were going to we were gonna turn onto that really busy street, and we're sitting there. We just turned on the engine, and we pulled up to the street, right? And Kyle had told me that to keep the car running, you have to keep giving it gas right after you turn it on. And then once it's running, you're good. You don't have to worry about anything. But we just turned this bitch on, and we're waiting at the fucking Denny's. And then the the engine stalled out. And I'm like, Kyle? And he goes, Devin, we're rolling. And then he (laughs) turns around and I look around and I see us beelining towards a little fucking Nissan. And I'm like, Kyle, we're going to hit the car. And I seriously, I saw it in the rear view. I was watching (laughs) his beeline towards this fucking sedan. I'm like, oh, this is so bad. This is going to turn so bad so quickly. And then like some maniac, Kyle just like flipped his fucking arm onto the, the, the seat behind us, right? Put his arm on the steering wheel and just start steering that bitch out. He's all, don't worry, buddy. I'll get us out of this. Like some fucking trucker, right? And then he he straightened us out and then put us uh right next to the fucking car. And then we stopped. He put us in neutral. He's like, see, I got it. And I was like, oh, I do not trust this fucking kid <laughs> one bit, man. Like driving with him, you're, you're gambling your life away. <laughs> oh, man. Like when we went to Phoenix with him and you looked at me, you're like, Devin, I'm scared for the first time <laughs> in a long time. How did you say it? For context, me and Eddie, when we went to the Logic concert, Kyle and my brother went with us, right? The Fantastic Four, as we like to refer to ourselves. And Kyle was driving us in a Dodge Charger. You know, um, uh, somewhat of a muscle car. V6 engine, really sensitive gas pedal. We were in Phoenix, and this motherfucker's on the highway, just shifting lanes like crazy, just going nuts with it, right? And I look at Eddie and I'm like, Eddie, I don't feel safe. And he goes, Devin, hold me. I'm scared. And he grabs onto the fucking safety rail and he's holding onto my arm. And then every time Kyle made a turn, he goes, ah! He started fucking screaming. I still, it, I don't know what's up with Kyle and Nissans, but during that that trip, he almost he almost ran into a, a Nissan. I got scared going into Phoenix with Kyle. Not because I don't trust Kyle as a driver, which I don't. You know, for the most part, he drives more than any of us here. So he would have the experience. Yeah. And technically, on a technical level, Kyle is really good at driving cars. Where I don't trust Kyle is mentally. <laughs> Emotionally. <laughs> Kyle is hectic and Kyle is reckless. So if Kyle's behind a nice, fast vehicle, he's like that guy from fucking Holes. What was his name? Twitch or Speed or something? Whenever he sees a nice car, yeah. he gets all fucking jittery and shit, right? He mm-hmm. starts shitting himself. 
And so when he's in one, you could just see these devil horns come out of him and he starts grinning ear to ear and you're like, oh my God, I might not make it back home tonight. So keep that in mind, right? Also keep in mind that when I went to Phoenix, I went to Phoenix like four or five times last year. And, uh, you know, the town we live in has a good population. It's got like 800,000 people. 500. 500,000 people. But it doesn't have highways the size or freeways the, the size, size of, of Phoenix. Is. Yeah, Phoenix is like a, a booming city. It's like L.A. It's not really, but it's closer to L.A. than it is to our town. Yeah. And every single time I went to Phoenix last year, I almost died on that freeway. I wasn't even driving some of those times. One of those times I was with my dad and the truck purposefully passed us, like cut us off, right? Almost ran into us and we had to merge into the other lane. And then my dad, he's a, he has road rage. So whenever shit starts happening, he, st- he starts looking for water bottles to chuck at people. <laughs> <laughs> I shit you not. I have a vivid uh, memory from when I was a kid. We were driving in, um, into a football game. I was sitting in the back seat, right? And some guy cut off my dad. And so my dad grabbed a water bottle, rolled down the window and fucking chucked it at his car. And he started trying to chase him. And my mom calmed him down. And she was like, calm down. He's all, fuck that. Fuck that shit. And he started chasing him, right? So when this guy cut him off in Phoenix, I was like, that's it. We're fighting. We're just going to, we're going to fight, right? And um, I was scared too. I was pissed off. So my dad starts looking for a water bottle and he can't find one. And he rolls down the window and then the guy speeds up and matches matches our speed, right? He's driving right next to us and he flips us off and he's like yelling at us like it's our fault for being in the lane and driving correctly. And so I flip him off and I start screaming and then I tell my dad to chase him and then my dad starts trying to chase oh him. Oh my fucking God. So I'm like, if you put Kyle in that kind of environment, <laughs> what are the chances that you're going to make it out alive? I'm surprised we're still here today to do this show. You know... The the more the more stories tell me about Kyle's driving, the less I would want to be with Kyle in a car. Like if he's passenger, <laughs> perfectly cool. Like let's say your brother's driving, cool. I'm fine with that. But the moment, the moment he says, "Let me drive," I am getting an Uber and meeting you guys anywhere. I'm not getting in that. Me car. and my brother have this uh, term now after driving with Kyle so much, right? Uh we call those guys, we, we, when, whenever we see people doing reckless driving, we're like, oh, he's he's being a Kyle right now. He's on some Kyle shit, right? So if he takes a left, if he takes a yellow light, he's being a Kyle. If he takes a left turn he shouldn't have taken, he's being a Kyle. If he starts speeding up out of nowhere, he's being a Kyle. So that gives you an idea of the kind of driver Kyle, Kyle is. Yeah. Again, as a driver, right? If he was calm, just a chill dude, as a driver... He's probably one of the best I've met personally, right? Right up there with me, my dad, my mom, right? As a person, he's reckless. He started betting with us, and he he was dropping $80 bets when the rest of us are dropping $5 bets. Did he windows? Yes, surprisingly. Oh, my God. (laughs) Which fuels his fucking recklessness even more. All right. I think this is a good, good, good break. yeah, good pause, and then we'll get into the rest of the subjects because all of this has just been fucking hectic stories with Devin, which we we haven't had a, any of recently. You know, now that I think about it, I get way too close to death way too often. You live life more than I do. I live life on the edge. Yes, you live yeah. in life like Larry. Not like Larry. Larry's pulling hoes, but I'm I'm up there, like. I'm not going to sit here and say I had the best weekend ever, but it makes for good co- content, good podcast content. Yeah. yeah. Oh, great. Horse lady's back. All right. Well, we'll be right back after these messages. Is something interfering with your happiness or preventing you from achieving your goals? Regardless, if you have a clinical mental health issue like depression or anxiety or You're just a regular human who lives in this world and is going through a hard time. Therapy can give you tools to approach your life in a very different way. And that's why I'm excited to tell you about today's sponsor, BetterHelp. BetterHelp's mission is to make therapy more affordable and more accessible. And this is an important mission because finding a therapist can be really hard, especially when you're limited to the options in your area. 
BetterHelp is a platform that makes finding a therapist easier because it's online, it's remote, and by filling out a few questions, BetterHelp can match you to a professional therapist in as little as a few days. It's easy to sign up and get matched with the therapist. There's a link in the show notes. It's betterhelp.com slash moonmen. Clicking that link helps support this show, but also gets you 10% off your first month of BetterHelp so you can connect with therapists and see if it helps you. And because finding a therapist is a little like dating, if you don't like your current therapist, which is a common thing with therapy, you can easily switch to another for free without stressing about insurance, who's in your network, or anything like that. Living a more fulfilling life can be a complicated situation. Whether it's chasing your dreams or trying to improve in small, meaningful ways, change can be difficult. Having options like BetterHelp gives you more leverage in managing life's difficulties. It can be a little nerve-wracking, but like we always say, sometimes you have to be willing to take risks in life. Yeah, what he said. So, if you're struggling, consider online therapy with BetterHelp. Click the link in the show notes or visit betterhelp.com slash moonmen. That's better, H-E-L-P slash M-O-O-N-M-E-N to get started today. Thank you again to BetterHelp for supporting the show. And now, time for a word from our sponsor, Dubby. You guys know the deal by now. Dubby is a powder-based energy drink designed to be a great tasting alternative to the traditional energy drinks you guys have been hearing about your whole life. Zero calories, sugar-free, all natural, and full of vitamins, Dubby is reinventing what energy drinks could and should be. Use it while you're studying, gaming, going to the gym, or listening to the Moonman podcast. One scoop has 150 milligrams of pure caffeine pulled straight from Mother Nature's beans, her coffee beans. A month's supply will run you around 40 bucks, but if you use the code MOONMAN at checkout, you can save 10% off your entire order. That's code M-O-O-N-M-E-N to save 10% off. So why not give it a try? We've been talking about it this whole time for a reason, and I guarantee you guys won't regret it. Thank you to Dubby for sponsoring the show. Welcome back. Devin is going to tell a story about his mother. Wow, that's actually registering pretty good. And then I talk right into the mic and look how low it picks up. I know. It's so stupid. Because I'm the main character, Devin. You just have a loud voice, but then when I when I compress all the audio, it matches the levels. I still had to adjust your gain, though. Anyways, welcome back, people. I reset, um, I reset that. I know, I know, but just in case. Oh, welcome back. Uh, we are we we got a little teaser here for the spooky hour. Um, kind of. I just remembered this weird thing that happened to my mom recently after a tragic event at work, and I wanted to tell Eddie about it because I don't think I have. No. We um, we only talk spe- specifically for work. Nothing else. At this point, yeah, because even when we get in the Discord, it's just the video game shit, and then we'll talk talk like at work here. Yeah. You know. By the way, you want to play No Man's Sky tonight? I don't know. I've been getting kind of bored about that that game. You want to play Fallout? No, we can't play Fallout. Well, no, you play and then I play. I've been kind of getting bored with that too. What? Yeah. Are you doing the main quest? Yeah. Well, which one? I'm Fallout or Fallout? Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Well, no, not really. I've just been trying to gather materials. That's cool. It's whatever. You know, you're allowed to have your own opinions. Yeah. It's not like it's one of my favorite games of all time, but whatever. <clears throat> so, um, the fuck was I on about? About a tragic event with your mother and. Yes. Yes. Okay. So, do you remember, like? three or four weeks ago now um when we were recording and uh my mom messaged me and told me that uh, one of her co co-workers had passed away yeah this pertains to that so that's the context here uh he was driving around and he, on a motorcycle and he got rammed into by somebody who didn't see him uh, the sun was in their eyes and they smashed into him and he got rushed to the hospital and he got put on life support. And eventually they just came to the realization that he's not going to make it. And so they pulled the plug. And 
the weird thing is my mom had one of those like ghost experiences and to give you a little bit more context my mom's kind of gangster like if you think i've had a lot of weird experiences and a lot of crazy experiences you have to listen to my mom's story i was thinking about having her on the show one you know what right as you were saying that i'm like i kind of want your mom on here like she's been in several drive-bys uh not participating but like survived them Uh, she's been she's seen all kinds of crazy fights happen uh, because when she was growing up in our town, there's a lot of gang activity. She was on a bus and she saw a guy come up to the window right next to hers and shoot somebody, you know. So she went through a lot of shit in her life and she's had she has a lot of paranormal experiences, too. Um, At our old house, I think I mentioned this at some point, but just for those of you that aren't aware, she used to see little ghost children running around the house out she would hear voices um of little children when we were all asleep she would see little shadows running around and hiding right she would see things moving on their own when everybody was playing uh sometimes in videos she could hear like little kids laughing that weren't us because you know you can you know who's laughing when you hear somebody's laugh the scariest instance to me is when she said that she saw a little like she she heard somebody playing and she went to the hallway and she saw somebody run or something like that. She she thought she saw one of us running and playing and then she saw somebody hiding under the bed like she saw these little like feet sticking out of the bed or whatever. Right. And then she thought it was one of us and we were supposed to be asleep. So she walked into the room, looked under the bed. And she saw a kid that wasn't any of us. And she just pretended that she didn't see anything and slowly picked her head up and was like, where are you? You got to go to bed. And she was freaking out because me and my brother were asleep right there, you know, in front of her. Right. So she's kind of one of those people that's really receptive to this kind of thing. So the day that her coworker passed, he got hit on his way to work in the morning. So it was around 7 a.m. And that's why the sun was in that person's eyes. Nobody knew until later on that day, like, you know, 2 p.m. that day, what had happened. Because then that's when the news broke to everybody. Wait a minute. I think I know the story. What? Didn't she see, didn't she see him in the elevator? Yeah. yeah. So when she got to work, she saw him in the elevator, right? And uh, she saw him. I don't know if she talked to him or not. I think she was trying to talk to him, but he ignored her. And she saw him going to the elevator and carrying a bunch of papers. And uh, she thought he was at work and he was just too busy to talk or whatever the hell. Um, And then she comes to find out that he actually passed away earlier that morning. And she was like, what? Like, no, I saw him. I saw him earlier today. Like, I saw him in the elevator. And then they were like, no, he, he never even made it to work. And she goes, what the hell? And she thought, like, he was trying to communicate something to her. Devin, I have a feeling you said on the podcast. I don't think I did. Yeah, because then I'm... I, would, I didn't want to talk about this on the podcast. Cause well, I didn't want to mention it around that time. Because I remember telling him, like, she should ask security for the footage. Maybe she saw they could see something on the cameras. I'm pretty sure that was Discord. No, it, it, it was like this. It might have been before i've got i I was conscious not to mention it around the time but even if i did uh she told me after the fact that um you know he went into the hospital they they put him on life support and when they were pulling the plug his whole family went out and a lot of the co-workers went out and she went out because she was his boss right and they had a a relationship she had known him for a couple years at that point you know funny side tangent i visited the office numerous times with her and on one occasion, right after I beat um, this video game that had a protagonist, uh, antagonist of the exact same name as him, I wanted to grief his desk because and make a reference to the game because I thought he was a nerd and that he might know the game. So for you, his name. Oh and I just God. beat. Right. And I wanted to put a sticky note on his computer and be like. And then knock over like one of his figures. Uh, but she told me not to. So, I I didn't I never really met the dude, so I, I I don't know. But he he seemed like a great person, right? Point of the story is when she got to the hospital, she met his parents, and he was always saying that his parents are like really weird and like into crystals and that kind of shit, and like mm. he didn't really associate with them. They're like hipsters, right? And she confirmed it. She was like, "Yeah, they're 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 
out there. You know, they they have different beliefs. And she said, she said that the mom looked calm and that she was like, I knew he passed away because when it happened, I was meditating and I saw it. Or her, her husband was meditating and he saw that he had passed away and then he told the mom or whatever. But they were already aware of it before anybody else or something, right? And when my mom walked up, she goes, oh, you're the lady that saw him in the elevator. And then my mom was like, yeah, who told you? And she goes, nobody told me. She goes, I know. She goes, I saw it when I was meditating. And my mom was all, what? She goes, yeah, I saw it. She goes... Uh, he was presenting himself to you or something like that. And it just freaked her out. And again, this lady has seen like actual paranormal experiences. She believes in ghosts so much to the point that she doesn't even watch horror movies because she thinks it attracts it into somebody's life. She refuses to watch horror movies, not because they're scary. She likes scary, fucked up shit. She just doesn't want to see anything about ghosts because then it attracts ghosts. You know, kind of like how you don't like talking about ghost stories at night because then you're more likely to see something. Right. And that that freaked her out. And I just started thinking about all the instances like when she saw the kid at uh, the our house, mm-hmm. right? Or um, when, oh, fuck, what was the other instance? She was babysitting one of her friend's houses and she, she was babysitting their house because they had a lot of cats and she was watching all the cats and it was at night. And I think they had played with the Ouija board really recently after she started living there or not living there, watching the house. They had just started playing a Ouija board a few days prior. And she said that when she was watching the house, all the cats started to get up, right? And there was like maybe five to seven cats. What do you mean get up? What do you mean like? They they were all laying down because cats are laying down oh, okay, okay. at the time, right? And they all started to get up and like stare towards one corner in the the house, and they were all looking at this one corner. And then they all started walking to the corner, and their tails were getting all furry, and they were starting to hiss at the corner. And e- every single one of the cats in the house went over to the corner and started hissing at it. And my mom was just sitting there on the couch, going, "What the fuck?" Was she playing it? Huh? Was she playing it? Playing it. The Ouija board. No, no, no. They, she said they had played at like a party a couple days beforehand. Oh, okay. And this was like a few years before she had me, I think. Oh, okay. So she's always been open to these kind of things. So I think it'd be cool if we got her on the show and she could give us some of her experiences. Sorry, I was looking at this. <laughs> I thought it was going to be scary. I thought the whole story was going to be like, oh... Your your mom? No, I said it's paranormal. You're the one that assumed it was gonna be super like spooky ghost adventure. Yeah, yeah, because I I don't know why I'm like okay. Your mom has a ghost story. It's gonna happen at the house. She's gonna she got sleep paralysis and saw you standing at the foot of her, uh, at the foot of her bed while you're holding an axe and ready to chop her into pieces. I thought it was gonna be some sh- shit like that. No, 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 nothing like that. Nothing too crazy. Like I said, this is like more of a teaser of the spooky. Oh, okay. That was weird. That was a weird noise at me. Huh? Yeah. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, I, I think it was weird that the whole, the mom knew of her son's passing and she knew, like. Do you think that to some extent that's true? I don't know. Because that, that whole realm of belief is so hard to wrap your head around. Because, like, for example, like my mom was sick, like, let's say a couple weeks ago. And her and I didn't tell my brother, but randomly he was saying that he was driving with his wife, my sister-in-law, and he just randomly said, I think my mom is getting sick. And sure enough, my, my our mom was, was sick. I, I think stuff like that, there's an instinct, right? Like, the mom said she knew because she, like, meditated on it right. and it showed her. But I've also heard cases of, like, parents... um knowing that their kids passed without even being told like they feel it in their heart Mm -hmm. and i want to believe it but there's like there's no way to test it and there's no way to like there's no science or evidence to really support it we're just going based off of what people feel you know which is hard to measure but there's a lot of things about that that belief system 
that are just hard to wrap your head your head around when it comes to ghosts and paranormal encounters and then also like the meditation and that kind of shit you know like when whenever i have my meditation experiences a lot of the times i come out of it and i don't know if it's like a daydream that i had or if it was a real you know experience like even the the whole thing with the serpent that i've mentioned on here before it's hard for me to go like, oh, that was a tangible thing that I was interacting with and I'm able to summon it, you know, or something like that. And I don't know how that really correlates into the afterlife. Because like, aside from the pseudoscience that people have done on it over the last, I want to say like 200 years or so, there's no real like, evidence or we don't really know that much about it you know we hear I, terms like poltergeist and haunting. i think we're, we're we're not supposed to know if there's an afterlife yeah but like again how do spirits you know fit into the afterlife and what what about the different kinds of spirits that we see you know because there are I'm sure all of us have seen ghost videos at one point where it shows like a little orb and we're like ah oh, it's a speck of dust right but I've also seen ghost videos where it's like an orb that seems to be moving in a way that dust wouldn't move. Mm -hmm. Where it's like going in a straight line and then left and right and then it turns and makes circles like deliberately. Like it, it's making choices and it's interacting with things and things seem to be responding to it. You know, and I've also seen the videos where like a full blown apparition is popping up. Like, I don't know how many times I've seen a ghost video uh, where a face pops up from somewhere in the background that looks extremely hard to fake because it's on a random video of like some Mexican band playing in Colombia or something. And it's like two minutes and the whole thing's in Spanish. And it's from a YouTube channel with two subscribers. It's got like 40 views. Mm -hmm. And then in the background, you see a little ghost face pop up for two seconds from a place that no person could actually fit. And it's like, what kind of ghost does that fall under? You know? Like, what are the classifications of ghosts? What causes these different types of hauntings? Like, that's that's a type of science I think we should be investigating. But like I said, maybe we're not meant to know. By, like, who? Who would be preventing us from knowing? A uh, stronger force. God. Like, God or the universe yeah. or something? I doubt. When it comes to knowledge of things i think it would be hard for god or the universe or any deity to prevent us from knowing you know or giving it our own classification even if it's not what it's known as like there's no way you could hide ghosts and hide the afterlife from us it's eluded us thus far because it's like a different plane of existence but um I, there has to be some sort of correlation to all these things there has to be some sort of system right because even with ghosts they fall under the the same categories and the same types yeah because we put that but their their head doesn't have to be a system but there's a system for everything in the universe even the most chaotic things have systems and uh laws that they abide by right maybe like one of those laws of physics yeah maybe one of those laws is we can't the living should not know the should not know the dead or but again that, that that brings into question like how is that even a possible as a concept is it even possible for us to not to see and be aware of something's existence but to not be able to pursue knowledge on it from some higher being you know if it's like a government it makes more sense because they're going to do actual real world things to prevent us from knowing but it, i it's it's hard for me to fathom, like, let's just say God preventing us from learning about ghosts. Because, like, the only thing I could see him doing is smiting us, which he hasn't done since the Old Testament, right? Or, well, like, directly intervening. Well, with God, he if if we see a ghost, that's, that's not God. It's the devil. Yeah. But then, like, if we were to, like, start finding out about it and researching it, right, like... How is it that we're not allowed to find out about these things? Like, who's preventing us from... You get what I'm trying to say? Yes, and it all comes back to, like, the <laughs> the religious talk where God... If if we start... 
if for example it'll be like the more and more we look into it the more and more we're giving our souls away to that evil thing i don't know because like if you research spirituality as a belief right does it mean that you lose more of your soul in the process or do you get more of it back knowing the good and the bad because to me it would be like if i'm catholic and i'm learning as much as i can about god and about god's will right and i want to learn about the devil and you know everything revolving around satan you know i would want to research that so i can have knowledge on it like a morbid fascination i guess when people hear about the different kinds of drugs out in the world it's not because they actually want to try the drugs some people would some people would go and like take it a step too far but it's also to have like knowledge to protect yourself in a sense right and i think wanting to classify different spiritual beings into whatever shouldn't be prevented from us or shouldn't be withheld from us you know well like you said it's gonna be some idiots are gonna wanna keep going and keep pushing and start well, the trying. idiots are doing it already the idiots are you know zach bagans and ghost hunters and people who are going out there and trying to find research you know real people because i can make the case that ghost adventures is a little bit dramatic and uh phony i know we both personally like the show but mm -hmm. revisiting it is really hard for me at my current age because it just feels fake mm-hmm but if you go based off of people who are, you know, quote unquote, actually doing real research onto the, onto the subject of like ghosts, they're the idiots that are taking it too far. And they're the ones that are going to help us understand what ghosts are. And like, what if we can find a way to not attract ghosts? It's a double edged sword with knowledge because you, you learn the good and the bad and you learn what you can, what you have to do to protect yourself, but then idiots learn what they have to do to like attract ghosts if they want to, right? Just like people learned how to make bombs and people like every step towards progression we make in science also has the backdrops like the atomic bomb. We figured out how to use nuclear fission and nuclear power in a way we had never done before. But because of that, we also created one of the most devastating weapons of all of mankind that might have attracted aliens same thing with ghost hunting if we were to classify ghosts and figure out what causes them and how to get rid of them we could help a lot of people who are affected by this but then at the same time people would figure out how to attract them and then let's say their bitchy ex-girlfriend breaks up with them to go with brad and now they're going to summon a ghost at her house to haunt her and shit like that then again they already have access to that they would just you know need to play a ouija board at that person's house and I don't know, too, like, ghosts and that kind of shit have their, their own laws already. Like, if you play with the Ouija board, you're most likely going to get haunted. Like, if I played it here, it's most likely going to latch on to me rather than it latching on to you, mm -hmm. right? But I, I don't know. Like, we don't know anything about it, and there's no real way for us to research it. But as like now. you keep saying, I feel like we're meant to not know. Because then once we start knowing, it's going to... It's good. We're going to be paying the consequences over and over again. And then we're going to start asking ourselves, why is this happening? Well, like, how so? What are you envisioning? In what way? Well, like, when you say that we're, we're not allowed to know and we're going to pay the consequences, how would we be paying the consequences? Our lives are going to be constantly haunted or... By researching it, we would attract it, you mean? Yes. I could see that, but, like... Is that any reason to not pursue it? Yes. Because you, you, we could have rationalized, we could put that ration into everything, right? Every, yeah. Again, everything from the nuclear bomb to yeah. like fucking flashlights. Mm -hmm. There's some sort of drawback to everything. Yeah. Just like with uh, Nikola Tesla trying to research, you know, free electricity for everybody. If he were to do it, everybody would benefit, but a lot of people wouldn't, you know? Uh, people who worked at coal mines wouldn't have a job. People who worked at copper mines wouldn't have a job because there would be less of a need for it because electricity is everywhere now, mm -hmm. you know? People who own those industries would be out of money. There's drawbacks to every sort of research we do.
Yeah, but there's nothing that is constantly going to be putting... Well, think about it like this. What about the people that are going through serious demonic hauntings that have no way to stop it? That's true. You know, and that are getting real-world effects. Because there have been cases of people who were haunted by demons and got exercised multiple times. I'm talking like dozens, like 75 times. Mm Mm-hmm. And uh, they think, oh, I'm good now. I'm clear now. And then they end up dying by some unknown cause. Right. Or people who are revolved around that. Like, what if you're a priest? Because it seems like Christians don't really believe in possession and exorcisms and that kind of stuff. But Mm -hmm. the Catholics do. So let's just say you're a priest. Right. And you believe in this kind of thing. And now you're subject to more exorcisms because of your belief. And you like could be targeted wouldn't you want the information that all the information you could have to protect yourself yeah but like i said it's gonna attract it will attract but it might attract you know and we could get people that don't even believe to look into it my point being it's gonna be there already and people are already gonna be attracting it so like we could research into it to try to find everything we can about it you know because everybody has a ghost story. Everybody knows somebody that has a ghost story. Yeah. It's really prevalent. It's like a it's a common thing for the dead to be communicating with us or the paranormal or the spiritual. Like they're making their presence known. Yeah, but like it keeps saying it's we're we're not meant to to know anything. Cuz it's two different worlds. It's two different worlds as of now. But, like, there are a lot of different branches of science that are looking to combine our worlds with other different types of worlds. Like, other dimensions, other realities, other planes of existence that are already ongoing right now, right? And it could be that it's not necessarily a different world in the sense, like, it's the dead and we're living. It could just be, like, another dimension another dimension that's interacting with us. If we're all living in a simulation, it could just be some sort of glitch that was programmed into the 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 thing. I don't know. It's it's something we sh- we shouldn't mess with. That's all I know. And why does it only affect like people, like living organisms? Right. Some people argue it's because we have a soul or whatever. Yeah. But like, that thought just occurred to me. Like, let's just say AI does take over the world. Mm-hmm. Nothing left but robots. All humanity is completely wiped out. There's potential now for billions of ghosts to be popping up everywhere, right? But is the AI going to be aware of our existence? Can it even comprehend ghosts or poltergeists? Like, it might know what it is by definition, but would it understand it as a concept? Would it be able to, like, see artificial ghosts from different computers of the past? No. Well, yes. Yes and no. Well, I mean, these are all kind of rhetorical questions that we wouldn't be able to answer, but they're they're they're, they're thought experiments, right? It, it, it if, makes me reimagine what it is, what ghosts are, and what a soul is, and what seeing a ghost entails. I don't know. It's it's a, it's a very like back. It's a very um. What's the, what's the word? Um, um. Back and forth conversation. It is. Yeah, it's a back and forth. That's not going to have an end to it. Because then you're going to be like, oh, what if this happens? What if that happens? Have you ever had any weird experiences as a kid in regards to just like something crazy happened that you weren't able to like appreciate as a kid? But now looking back, you were like, what the fuck? What do you mean? Like one for Cause, me. Because like a lot of stuff jumped into my mind when <laughs> when you said that. Well, it could be anything, I guess. But one thing for me was the time that I was almost kidnapped I don't know if I said it on the show, where uh, me and my brother, we were playing in a dirt lot that was right by my Nana's house, right? It was just us outside, which is a crazy concept to think about. Because uh, I I heard this on the Joe Rogan podcast, actually. Second shout out of the episode. Congratulations, Joe. You've squirmed your way into my recommended feed. He was saying that it's a weird concept to be letting kids out on their own at such a young age, right? Like, we weren't going to the store and buying cigarettes for my my grandpa or anything like that. But we were still allowed to go roam 
in so many different scenarios that I couldn't imagine like my little brother now doing, right? And I was, at the time this took place, I was only about four years old. My brother was like three years old. And we were playing in this dirt lot near my Nana's house and right connected to the lot, to the back of it was this trailer park that was infamous for being run down and having a lot of drug addicts. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, they always told us, like, if you see somebody, don't talk to them. Like, if they're trying to come up to you, like, just walk away, all that kind of shit, right? If somebody hops the fence, come to the house and let us know. And um, because of that, there's a lot of strange characters hopping through the fence, walking through this dirt lot right next to my Nana's house, walking right in front of it. We're always surrounded by weird people. And I guess I got desensitized desensitized to it because one day me and my brother were out we were playing there and i forgot what we were doing i think we were looking for sticks to make his guns right and some guy called us he was a little bit older than us he was like four, 14 16 around that age i can't tell and he starts calling us he's like hey hey come over here and me and my brother had never seen him before but they never warned us about teenagers you know mm-hmm. they don't tell you how fucked up teenagers can be sometimes we were just worried about adults. And so he caught my attention. He's like, hey, come over here. Come over here. I got some toys for you. And then my brother started walking forward and I grabbed his arm. And I was like, we don't want your toys or something. He's like, come here. I got some toys to show you. I want to show you guys these toys. He's all, my friend has toys at his house. I want to come show them to you. Some shit like that. And uh, I looked at my brother and for, for one moment, I was like, does he really have toys at his house? Like, that would be kind of cool if he had toys at his house. You know, we got to play with some free toys. But then I was like, wait, no, this is exactly what they've been training us for our whole life, right? So then I was like, no, no, we're not going. He's all, come here. And so we started walking away. He's shouting at us, come here, come here. And we walk towards the house. And then we tell our family and they immediately assess the situation and run the fuck outside. And by that time he was gone. I don't even think he lived at the trailer house, which is even scarier. Hmm. But at the time as a kid, I was like, oh, that was a weird guy. You know, brushed it off. Oh. But now I'm like, yo, like if I had walked up, like my family would have never saw me again. I might have died at the age of like five. You know, I might have got sold into slavery or something. No, nothing like that. It doesn't have to be a kidnapping. No, no, no. Story, but just like, just like <laughs> Matt, I don't really remember my childhood and I don't re- really remember a lot of parts of it. Like, I, I'll get like small flashbacks. I get like, that time i almost died in that car accident I, i've said it on here where i was walking home from school and there was a police chase happening at the same time oh yeah and the I guy took that. a hard right and almost rolled over onto the curve where i was walking on yeah yeah see that's crazy too and at the time but like but like i was like nine ten and at day. that age you kind of just brush it off and go about your day well, no, I was like freaked out because I'm like, oh shit, I could have. Because I saw the tires hit the curve. And if he'd gone a little bit more quicker, he could have flipped over and crushed me. Like, I don't know if it's an age thing, but recently I've just been not fascinated with death, but like, I had this new appreciation for it, right? Because I've always thought about death my whole life. I think most people do. And I always like imagine what it would be like and me being more of like an existentialist or a nihilist. Like I just assume that nothing happens afterwards. Right. But that being said, it's hard to picture that nothing. It's hard to picture yourself in heaven. It's hard to picture yourself entering Nirvana. Mm -hmm. And recently, as I hear about people talking about death and having these near death experiences with Kyle, I get these, I get this like feeling of like dread that like falls into my stomach and I feel like I'm getting closer to grasping what death is and like realizing like it like that, like one second and everything's gone. Mm -hmm. Like we think about it like, Oh shit, if that car hit me, I'd be dead. Or if uh, somebody shot me with the gun, I'd be dead. But like actually like realizing it and like coming to terms with it and knowing like everything it's gone. Like it takes a second. Yeah. But like, I I'm gonna look for look at look at this from a non religious perspective. Once you're dead, it's over. You're not gonna feel anything. Everything you did in your life, you're not even gonna remember it. All the people you've met, you're not gonna remember. Yeah, but that's a scary thought as a living person because when you're dead, it's all over. Yeah. You don't have to worry about it. But as a living person, naturally wired to be fearful of death, knowing that 
everything you've ever done with your life doesn't mean shit. Everything that you're going to do with your life doesn't mean shit. Mm -hmm. If there is no afterlife, it just goes black. Like, this is all nothing. It's scary. Yes and no. Like, when you try to sit down and fathom it, it's scary. And it builds into that fear of death. Because in all actuality, when it hits you, like, it's over. You could suffer towards death. And you could suffer in the brief seconds before you get... Before you die. But... Aside from that, which is inevitable, like everybody's going to, you know, have to go through that. Thinking about it and anticipating it and waiting for it, it builds in that fear and that dread, you know? Yes and no. Because I I classify as two (laughs) non-religions and religious. As a non-religious perspective, it's like, finally, like, I'm, I'm done. Everything's over. I don't have to worry about paying bills. I don't have to worry about, um... If these people are going to like me or not, it's over. Oh, well. But as a religious standpoint, I'm like, did it? Did I do enough to make God proud? Am I going to get into heaven? That That's what worries me. I don't really get scared. I, I just get more worried about it. Yeah, and then there's the whole religion part of it, too. Because, like, assuming one of these religions is real, right? Mm-hmm. You have to hope. I think people joke about it all the time, but you have to hope you pick the right one, you know? Mm -hmm. What if it turns out that your religion wasn't the right religion? And that brings a whole new set of fears. And depending on the religion, which I'm assuming most of them will make you feel like shit for questioning the religion too, which would be a natural conclusion for somebody to come to. Like, is my religion the right religion? Is my belief the right belief? And then questioning that as a sin or doing that, you're going against Buddha or, you know? It's like well, you're supposed to trust whatever method or whatever belief wholeheartedly. I feel like if, if you chose a wrong religion, I feel like you won't get punished for it. I don't know because I think about it as like a cosmic... Okay, have you ever heard that 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 joke where the the girl dies and she's begging for God to save her the whole time, right? Some people come in a boat to try to save her. Some people come in a helicopter to try to save her. And she keeps rejecting them because she's like, God's going to save me. And then he's like, I sent you two boats and a helicopter. Like, what do you want me to do? I think of it like that. Because what if it, like all these religions, let's just say Buddhism is the right path, mm-hmm. right? And you're a Christian. Your whole life, you keep hearing about Buddhism. And you're like, nah, I'm a Christian. You know, Jesus Christ died for my sins. This is the path I choose. And then at the end, they're like, we gave you 976 chances to join our religion and you rejected us every single time. And what if it's the exact, It they even say it in Christianity, you know, they're going to get led down the wrong path and you guys are the chosen few, right? And even out of the Christians, like not all of you are going to make it. Most mm-hmm. of you won't make it actually. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and it's like, you think about it in a Christian sense too, because Christianity is one of those religions that has lived on all throughout history. I think it's the longest one. It's one of the longest ones because uh, there are a lot of different cultures that still hold on to their belief systems, but it's one of the longest standing, you know, belief systems or spirituality, spiritualisms, whatever. It's one of the longest religions. And I looked at it like that when I was a Christian too. I'm like, Look how many chances God gives you to come into his kingdom, right? You hear about it virtually everywhere, almost as if it's by design. You hear about it in YouTube videos, podcasts, TV shows, radio, people talking. You hear you hear about it as a concept in almost every country everywhere, right? You hear about it from all different colors of people. And it's like, God's giving you like a thousand chances to join his religion. And if you don't, I mean, oh, well. And it's like that that's a scary concept. Like I said, if if you quote unquote chose the wrong religion, I feel like you won't get punished for it. But they say you would in the in Christianity. And I don't know enough about other beliefs to say that that's what would happen. But in Christianity, they're like, you will be punished for following, you know, false prophets or you will be punished for following others that are not Christ. And you will be punished if you don't follow Christ exactly, you know? Yeah. You, uh, 
I mean, everybody has their own interpretations of what they think will happen with Christianity and with God. Mm -hmm. But according to the text, from what I read, it said you have to follow very... There's a set of rules that you have to follow almost to the T. Right? And then people started throwing in all these extra rules and it gets really complicated. But if you follow the ones that are in the book to the T and you do your best to just follow those, you should be good. Right? But 90% of people don't do that because that's hard. And they want to do different variations of that because it's a little bit easier. And then that's what they warn about in the actual Bible too. They're like, people aren't going to follow this all the way. They're going to come to me and I'm going to turn away from them and say, you don't know me. And it's, that's, it, that whole concept is scary. Not having a religion is scary. Yeah, not the people who just think that it's, it's lights out, I, I don't get it. I, I just don't get it. There's a multitude of reasons why, but at least for me, it just makes sense to put it in the plainest terms, right? Because there's too many contradictions with every religion and there's too many things that don't add up. And whether that's by design or whether that's because it's man-made, I have no idea. But just the simple Christian calendar only dates us back a few thousand years or so, right? Mm -hmm. But the scientific calendar that we've been able to study and measure puts us back billions of years. You know, the universe is like 4.5 billion years old. The earth is like, what What was it, 3.8 or something? When we looked it up? It's, yeah, something like that. We have concrete proof of things that we have not been told by any other religion that we found outside of those religions, which makes it hard to trust anything they say after the fact. Now, again, that could be by design with your whole philosophy, like we're not meant to know about those things, so mm -hmm. they might have lied to us, which makes it even more crazy. And especially since a lot of these ancient texts of spirituality come from people who were hearing the voices of these deities, right? Like uh, the prophet Muhammad, who continued to preach uh, Jesus's word after he passed. Or, you know, Noah writing down all of God's teachings, shit like that. And it's hard, like, oh, did Noah fuck up or did James fuck up and like... It's hard to figure all that shit out, you know what I mean? And to like put your entire faith on it. It's like gambling in a sense. It's like, I don't have all the facts, but I trust this wholeheartedly because of these things and because of my personal beliefs. And for me, it's just easier to be like, you know, it was a cosmic accident that we're here. There's a chance there might be other life out there. More than likely, they we're the only ones in the universe. At least that's what it's looking like. Mm -hmm. and we just have to appreciate the lives we're given do whatever we want enjoy our life be nice people and then boom we're gone but like let's say there those people are wrong those people are getting sent to hell on fire or yeah. or or whatever the the and that's what's crazy is because like even me i get the urge sometimes i'm like i could follow christianity and be a Christian just to be on the safe side, right? But then I feel like I'm a phony because the whole thing with belief systems and especially when it comes to Christianity is like you're building a relationship with God and he wants to know you and you have to open yourself to him and be more vulnerable than you will be with any other living person on this planet because he sees you and he knows you and he's known you since before you were you, right? Mm-hmm. And it's like you can't jump into because that's how you that's how you beat the game, so to speak. That's how you have to do it. You have to give it a hundred percent commitment. And that's how you'll get into heaven. And you can't give it a hundred percent commitment if you're only doing it to save your own ass. Well, it doesn't matter. Uh he 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 doesn't judge those who just chose him because they, they were scared. No, it's, he doesn't choose them because he doesn't mind if you chose them because he was scared. But I think he also looks at intent. He also looks at character of the person. Like he knows those who believed in him mm -hmm. and those who are just like, yeah, 
those who were like, I appreciate what you did for me. And I appreciate the fact that you died for me. And I chose to follow your word because I wanted to rebuild the world with you. Right. Versus the people that are like, shit. I mean, I just didn't want to go to hell. I kind of started to like you a little bit more 20 years into it. But like, he's going to know. Yeah. But like even those who, who accept Jesus Christ a second before they die, they still get saved. And that's what you hear a lot. But again, in the Bible, it there's like a different, there's a different meaning behind it. I never got the gist that you could just say you accept Jesus and then pass away and then you'll be good. Well, you're supposed to say with your heart. That's why. <laughs> yeah. But I still didn't get the sense like you could say it with your heart and fully believe it. And then boom, you're good. You're going to get sent to heaven. Because up until that point, you sinned your entire life and you're using Jesus' sacrifice in vain to save your own skin. Well, that's he, why that's why he sent Jesus so he doesn't have to send all 8 billion people to hell. Well, yeah. But I think what a lot of people don't realize about Christianity, which is hard to hear, especially if they do believe, is that it's like a club in the sense that you have to maintain all the rules or you're not going to get in. And you're, they're not going to tell you if you follow the rules until you die. Well, So you think you're in good standing up until that point. But again, it, it, there's like a lot of set of rules and it says over and over again in the Bible, there's going to be a lot of people who think they're Christian or a lot of people who think they're going to be saved and then they don't get saved. Well, the, the only rule I know is once you accept Jesus Christ, that's it. You're good. Yeah, there, you're there's good. your there's your ticket. You're gonna get into heaven. And me and my uh, ex wife used to talk about this, right? Because we were believers together. If you accept Jesus's um, sacrifice, you're like, I believe in his sacrifice, and I I believe that he died for my sins. At that point, you have an obligation to start living your best life as a Christian. Otherwise, your acceptance doesn't mean squat. If you say on Tuesday, I believe Jesus died for my sins wholeheartedly with your chest, with your heart, with your emotion, you say it, you feel like you're about to cry. And then afterwards you feel good for the rest of the day. You now have an obligation on your shoulder that most people will shrug off. You now have to live as a Christian and do right by God and do God's will until the day you die. Otherwise, that acceptance you know, you accepting his his sacrifice mm -hmm. isn't going to mean anything. Well, it's not going to be taken away either. I, but I don't know. I don't think it explicitly says it'll get taken away, but it does say the that, the only way the only way it will get taken away is you do the what is it, the the for for you blaspheme against the Holy Spirit. Yeah. you get the mark of the beast, or there was one last one. I think those are the two main ones. Well, there's three, but I, I I can't remember the last one. Um, but yeah, if you do those, then you just screw yeah, yourself. Yeah, yeah. But again, it says people who follow me and people who think they're following me. Not this isn't verbatim. I don't yeah. know the exact verse, but it says people who think they're following me and will be safe aren't. You know, and a lot of people are going to come to me, and I'm going to turn away from them and say, "I yeah, don't know you." Yeah, because they. Those they, are people that are just like, oh yeah, I believe in God, and then you know, yeah, I'm, but like, those those, those, are the, those are the, those are the same people who didn't accept Jesus Christ. But I'm willing to bet there's going to be a lot of people in that category who accepted Jesus and then didn't follow His word, because the whole thing that you see over and over again in the Bible, and the whole thing that you read about over and over again in the Bible, is essentially becoming a messenger of God and becoming a tool for God. You're now on this earth to help God once you accept it. Mm -hmm. You're not here to indulge in whatever you want and just do whatever you want. You do have free will, but with that free will, you should choose to follow God in a sense and continue to do God's will. And if you feel like God's telling you to, you know, help as many people as you can and donate to homeless people and to spread the word then that's what you got to do. Yeah. And th that's not that's not a bad lifestyle. No, I'm not saying it's a bad lifestyle. But what I'm saying is it's hard to put faith into anything like that because I don't want to just hop into Christianity 
be like, thank you, Jesus, for your sacrifice. I accept your, I accept that you died for my sins, right? And then half-ass my way through being a Christian, then get to the pearly gates, and they're like, yeah, no, you're not going to get in. And I'm like, why? I accepted him. And they're like, yeah, but you didn't live as a Christian. You didn't live in Christ's image. You continue to sin. You continue to blaspheme. You know, you may have felt it in that moment, but that was your chance to now be a Christian. Because at that point, you're just wasting his sacrifice. If you're like, boom, I accept it. Thank you. And you go on and you sin. You go on and you keep sinning without trying to be better without trying to do God's will, then what was the point of just saying you accept it? It doesn't mean anything. But like I keep saying, it doesn't matter. Once you accepted him, you punch your ticket and you're good. Well, that's my perspective. But yeah, yeah, that. but I, I, I'm, I'm not saying that once you accept him, just go sin. I'm not saying that. No, but that's what 90% of people will do, mm-hmm. whether it's conscious or unconsciously. Mm-hmm. And to me, it wasn't about the act of sinning because we are born sinners and we will sin you know, eventually. But it's about continuing to stay on the straight and narrow, like sobriety, in Mm -hmm. a sense. If you take the pledge to be sober, right, and then a week after you're sober, you have one little shot. Two weeks after that, you know, you have a beer. A year later, you have another cocktail. You might be sober for the most part, but there's always that chance that you're just going to fall back into it again, especially if you're continuing to tempt yourself with it, right? And to me, it's a lot like that. Like, you can't take this serious pledge and then continue to just go on living how you're going to live. Even if it happens unconsciously, or uh, let's just say you slip up, you have a bad day, you buy a beer, right? You take the sobriety pledge. Mm -hmm. It's about getting back on the straight and narrow the next day and doing what you can to stay on the straight and narrow, you know? And it just so happens that the straight and narrow is a really thin line and a lot of people think it's a thick line and they're able to get a lot more leniency than they have. Yeah, but we're we're humans. We're not perfect. We're... Oh, no, I know that. But my hope as somebody who's not a Christian but was into Christianity is by putting this on the show and putting my reservations and my fears, it'll help those of you that are Christian to maybe re-examine your relationship with God, maybe re-examine what you should be doing as a Christian. Also, it's just a fun conversation to have because yeah. this, like, again, let's just say you dedicate your whole life to Christianity. Mormons were the answer the whole fucking time. Or let's say you dedicate your life to Christianity. You didn't do it the right way or you chose the wrong branch of Christianity and now you're fucked. Let's, and let's say you don't put your life into anything like me and you're fucked. It feels like you're fucked no matter what. So just choose the fuckery that you can deal with. For me, because I don't believe in anything, I give myself a set of morals that I live by and I do my best to maintain it. You know, be a good person uh, is basically just the gist of it at the end of the day. Yeah. You know, there's going to be people saying that this last part was all bullshit. Because weren't people complaining about Bork's episode about the Christianity part? Yeah, uh, when we went into Christianity with Bork is I saw the retention drop and a lot of people were skipping through it and then the people that did listen were complaining about it. The few complaints that I got. Most of them were people I know so I don't want to give all you goons the bad rap but Mm -hmm. when we talk about these kinds of things it's because we want to have open-minded discussions about everything people. This is a safe space to talk about virtually everything in our world, everything in our universe. So if we could talk about Satan and demons for two hours, we should be able to talk about God and spirituality for two hours without all you guys getting upset, you know, and it's up to you whether or not you want to listen to it. But, you know, we've been saying this from the beginning. We're going to talk about what we want to talk about for as long as we want to talk about it. But that being said, I really didn't think we were going to go into this right now. Yeah, no, neither did I. I wanted to start it off with my mom's little spirituality ghost story and then i thought we were gonna wrap up shortly after that and then now we're well according to this we're almost at two hours but with all like the an hour edits, 40 yeah it'll probably be like an hour 40 that being said do you have anything else you want to go into or no. should we start wrapping it up let's wrap it up all right a uh, quick little wrap-up question here what do you think about toxic masculinity 
there is some. I think it's over exaggerated. Yes. Let's just leave it at that. Yes. <laughs> that that we'll, we we can touch upon that upon another time. But I don't know. I hear that word thrown around a lot. I wanted to bring it up more just so I could put it in the in the title as clickbait, but ah, it's whatever. Whatever. You guys can hear the music. You know we're almost done. So again, we're gonna be off for the next two weeks. I think it's two weeks. We planned it out as two weeks. But we're gonna be off for the next two weeks. We will be back September 18th for the one year special. So make sure you guys all tune in. You can listen to it on YouTube. You can listen to it on Spotify. You can listen to it on Apple. Apple. Yeah, Apple. Oh, it's not gonna have the the. Oh shit. Whatever. We got some. We got some things coming. So I hope you guys all tune in for the one year. I love you all. Thank you for listening. Thank you for getting this far in the episode. And uh, see you in two weeks. This concludes the Moon Men podcast. The end.